for Dinner Than a Doornail, Cliché Gone Bad. Madam Toastmaster, thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. It's great to have all of you here. Welcome to Toastmasters. There is an important element of communication that has gone unnoticed far too long by Toastmasters, that is, until today. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we stop thinking about what we're saying and we start using cliches. It's kind of a lazy way of speaking. We need to be careful, though, because many cliches are antiquated, even obsolete. Many cliches are obscure. Some don't make any sense at all, and they can sabotage your message by making it confusing or vague. I have a few examples that I'm going to share with you. I consider these cliches to be deader than a doornail. They're good illustrations of the types of things we need to look out for when we are getting ready to prepare a message. So let's start with a good working definition. A cliche is an expression that, due to being overused, has lost its originality. Simple enough. As far as where they come from, cliches originate literally from every source imaginable. For example, have you ever asked anyone, hey, how are things going? And the answer they gave you was, things are hunky-dory. <laughs> <laughs> that begs more questions than an answer. <laughs> questions like, what level of satisfaction does Hunky Dory imply? <laughs> More importantly, what the heck does it mean? It's an odd expression. In fact, the phrase Hunky Dory morphed out of a combination of languages. It actually was originated by sailors. When sailors were in Japan and they wanted to have a good time, they went to Yokohama. There was a street there called Hancho Dory. That was the first incarnation of the phrase Hunky Dory. Later on, the word Hancho was replaced with the word hunk. Hunk is a derivative of an old Dutch word, honk. It means goal. There was a phrase in America in the mid-1800s to be all hunk. That meant you had attained your goals. And from there, it evolved into the phrase hunky-dory. Of course, that doesn't answer the question, what the heck does it mean? <laughs> so we'll see if we can figure it out. If hunky means you've attained your goals, dory is a Japanese word. It means street. So literally, you're on goal street. Perhaps you're on the street. You've almost achieved your goals, or maybe you haven't made or how about this? Why don't we just be clear on what we mean? <laughs> Hunky Dory is an example of an obscure cliché. And while we're at it, let's make sense with our clichés, because some, some don't make any sense. There's one I use uh, more than I should. Perhaps you use it as well from time to time. This happens when you run into somebody, and you know you know them. You just can't remember where it is you know them from. In fact, you can't even remember their name. The best that you can come up with is that their face rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> rings a bell. When you think about it, doesn't it sound rather impolite? <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about my face ringing a bell. <laughs> what kind of bell are we referring to, by the way? Church bell? Doorbell? Taco bell? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And the irony is, nobody can figure out where the phrase rings a bell came from. You got it. It doesn't ring any bells. <laughs> it's the type of senseless cliche we should try to avoid. Along with the obscure and the senseless, there's a third type. And this type of cliche is antiquated at best. Perhaps we could use it in some instances, but it's more obsolete than anything. I just used one of these a couple of weeks ago. I went to the gas station and filled up my truck. When I pulled away, I noticed the needle on my gas gauge was stuck on the E. I made the remark that my gas gauge had gone haywire. <laughs> not really, it didn't. 21st century technology may malfunction, but it does not go haywire. <laughs> not in light of the origin of the word. And there's actually some dispute on how the phrase started. Some people attribute the origin of the word to logging camps in Maine. They used to keep loose bailing wire around to repair machinery with. And then they referred to that machinery as having gone haywire. Then in 1946, a book was published called The American Language Supplement. And the scholars who authored that book attributed the phrase going haywire to farmers who used it in reference to employing a hatchet to open a bale of hay. The wire would whip and whirl around. In either case, if you're talking about a malfunctioning Blackberry, iPod, MP3 player, computer, <laughs> vehicle, going haywire is inappropriate. <laughs> Which leads me to the last one I have time to address. And this is the type of cliche that is obsolete. No question about it. 
deader than a doornail. <laughs> Again, there's one that I use all too often, and this is because sometimes, well, more than I want to admit, I just spend too much. And I'm an accountant, you think I know better. <laughs> but that's another speech. <laughs> that's not always in terms of money. Sometimes you just invest more time and energy than is worth whatever it is that you have got re uh, received in return. Sort of like going to Ikea on a Saturday afternoon for a curtain rod. <laughs> That's insanity. You <laughs> <laughs> never like on a Saturday afternoon, you know what I'm talking about. But usually it's in terms of money. And I may refer to the whole process as having to pay through the nose. Anybody pay through the nose for anything? <laughs> Let me tell you just how obsolete this cliche is. It's been around since the ninth century. The Danes used to levy a tax on the Irish. And if you were Irish and didn't pay your taxes, the punishment was having your nose slit open. Oh. We're past that. <laughs> <laughs> My time has passed as well. I need to cut and run. So I hope I've given you some food for thought, and I will drive everyone crazy by speaking in cliches for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> there is a couple, though, that I will end with that are not deader than a doornail. These cliches are vibrant, and they're appropriate for you, because if you're here in Toastmasters today, that tells me that you have goals. And being a part of Toastmasters, can help you develop skills you can use to accomplish your goals. Perhaps more importantly, it can give you the self-confidence to go out and take on the world and the challenges that life presents and have some merriment in your life. So I'll leave you with this. Keep the faith and make it happen. And good afternoon. <laughs> Mount Hope. Thank you, Pat, for